Well, I'm sure, Esther, you've heard the term uh, passion project before. Um, I'd heard the term, but I never dreamed I'd be part of one. But uh, this is the first thing I've ever done in my life that I was just compelled to do. Um, you know, you don't you don't spend six and a half years uh, making a documentary film to um, as a get rich quick scheme. It was um, really just part of trying to um, reconcile with my father's death and to. Um, exorcise some ghosts, if you will, and, and do some uh, healing. In the documentary, it's very clear that your father's life revolved around the life of Johnny Cash for many years. I know this is a big question, but what was it like growing up in this environment? Well, there, you're right. There, there are many answers to that question. Of course, there's um, the fact that um, as, a, as a youngster, um, I think... Anybody could relate to um, um, situations where one or the other parent is is away a lot for work and and learn to kind of resent the, the person or or the job that takes your parent away and, and in this case it was Johnny Cash so uh, when I was very young I certainly probably resented Cash for that and I later came to um, um, love the man because he was. Um, very uh, kind to me and, and generous and good with children and let us eat lots of candy. But, you know, it, it's, uh, the answer to that question is, is uh, virtually endless when you consider the fact that um, it was my father's relationship with Cash which truly defined my childhood, and that's what I explore in this film. And it took 90 minutes to answer that question. You cover a lot of content in, in the documentary, part of your relationship with your father, but also the relationship between your father and Johnny Cash. And you also say in the documentary that your father was more of a manager than a parent to you. How has it affected you as an adult? Well, it, it, it had a very negative effect, um, uh, certainly, as an, as an adult, uh, until recently when through the... Um, uh, course of, of making this film, uh, I was able to um, uh, better understand and, and uh, reconcile with, with my father and forgive and, and basically get that, that chip so many of us have on our shoulders where we blame everything that goes wrong in our lives on our parents. So, you know, it, the film has taught me to take personal responsibility for um, for my life, but before that, I um, certainly had uh, had great difficulty. Not unlike most other kids who perhaps you knew who had parents who were in the military, and they were always complaining that um, their father or mother had were very strict. And um, I, I must quickly add that there's nothing special about my childhood. I simply have the um, um, I'm blessed to be able to tell a universal story about fathers and sons because Johnny Cash happens to star in my story. And your father kept an audio diary for many years. How long did he keep it for? My father began recording an audio diary the year I was born, which was 1965, and continued that practice uh, until shortly before he died. And he also recorded uh, many of his phone calls with Johnny over the years. And this is what truly makes this film unusual uh, by, by any standard in the genre, in that it's driven almost entirely by Johnny and Saul's own voices. And um, these uh, recordings were, were fascinating because they were... Uh, eyewitness and contemporaneous and they were so candid neither man ever expected their voice ever to be heard by a third party so we learn things for the first time about Johnny Cash in the 1960s that we've never known before and more importantly to me I learned uh, who my father was uh, as a man rather than this two-dimensional projection of a parent that most us kids you know know about our parents so it was really a, um, a remarkable experience. It seems like, Jonathan, you've almost completed the documentary. It's like he started it and you've put it into a film. 
Is that sort of uh, a conscious thing for you? Well, you know, that's a very interesting way of putting it. Um, you know, I've now been to more than 10 countries and more than two dozen film festivals since June, and uh, there have been those people who uh, I suppose are, you know, very positive people who believe that everything happens for a reason, which is fine, and they they come up and they, they're convinced that my father um, uh, left all of this material for me to find uh, to uh, somehow mend fences or perhaps to tell his story. I don't necessarily believe that that was true. In fact, I could tell you that if he knew I had touched his stuff, he would kill me. But your your point is a very good one. Um, he did go to all this trouble to keep these records, and uh, because of fate and circumstances, or whatever you wish to call it, um, I had the need to get to know him, and uh, the medium I chose to do it was film, and in, in that respect, yes, I finished what he started. Mm. Uh, a quote from the film is, managers don't quit superstars, they get fired, which was proved wrong by your father. And he quit in a time where Johnny Cash was not on the drugs and skipping shows, but when he was clean and and becoming a born-again Christian. What do you think finally instigated your father's decision to quit Johnny Cash? Well, um, thank you. Um, may I preface this by saying that um, I uh, this is one of, obviously, two central questions that... I set out to answer in, in, in making the film. The other, of course, was why did my father commit suicide and not leave a note? And so to answer this question would be to give away the ending of the movie. Mm. But I can say, and by the way, I just want to correct something, and I don't mean to disparage Johnny Cash because I, I am a huge fan and, and I, I have great respect for the man and I try, tried to... Um, um, demonstrate as much in, in, in taking very good care in making this movie. But um, what you've just described about Johnny's um, um, getting clean in, in the 1970s is what I would call the walk-the-line version of history. In other words, it's not true. It's based on a true story, but it's not true. Um, Cash continued for the rest of his life uh, to be hooked on on pills, but he but to a much, much lesser extent than he ever was in the 1960s. Um, but yes, he did go through a uh, very significant and, for him, very personal and important religious transformation in 1971. And uh, it's unfortunately, it, it was something that um, put him and my father in direct conflict because my father's job was to help Johnny make uh, greater strides in his career and more money and reach the next level. And unfortunately, uh, Johnny no longer wanted to do commercial projects at the time and was quite focused on wanting to do things that uh, I suppose would be, um, you know, religious in nature and um, and so on. And uh, so the two men came into conflict. And let's just say that it was an ideological conflict that ultimately broke them up. Mm. Um, a very powerful thing that Saul said in, in the f film was, he robbed me of my soul, and now he's trying to save it. Do you feel well, like Johnny Cash robbed your father of his soul? Um, you know, that's, you're the first journalist um, ever to... Um, to quote that line from the movie, and I congratulate you. It's a very powerful line, and it's one that will probably get me lynched when I show this film next month in, in Tennessee, in the American South, where uh, people are particularly sensitive about religion. But um, my answer is no. I don't, um, I don't think Saul would even, um, if he were alive, would say that Johnny intentionally robbed him of his soul. But what Saul was referring to in the movie at that time uh, in the movie was he was speaking metaphorically about how um, having been with Cash for that many years 
and having survived the 60s, the drugs, the women, the arrests, the trials, um, the no-shows, um, only to be faced with what appeared to be um, irreconcilable differences between star and manager in the early 1970s, um, was that Saul felt that he was getting to a point where he couldn't be himself any longer. He was losing himself to Johnny because he felt that he couldn't be as open and as honest and perhaps as uh, as um, as controversial as he would have liked to have been about Johnny's newfound religious beliefs, given that my father was uh, an atheist Jew. So it, it was really about, it wasn't that Johnny, that, that Saul was saying Johnny intentionally robbed him of his soul, but that the circumstances were such that my father felt metaphorically robbed of his soul, mm -hmm. and now Johnny was trying to save it for him because clearly he felt that Cash was trying to convert him to Christianity at the time. Mm. Um, as well as, you know, documenting his own life, your father seemed to like lists. He even wrote a list of pros and cons for committing suicide. How did you feel when you saw that list on paper? Um, wow, very emotional. Um, I may have been estranged from my father, but I certainly remember um, growing up that he was um, a list maker. And uh, as you know from seeing the film, he also made a list of pros and cons about uh, quitting Johnny Cash when he did. Um, but the, particularly what he had to say uh, about his children in this suicide pros and cons list was what affected me the most. And as you recall, he put my brother and I in the pro column, which was surprising until you read what he wrote, which was detente with boys instead of total alienation. So my father felt that even though we weren't close, um, it was like detente, which is that word they use when, you know, two countries are, are decide to stop being at war for a little while, and they call it detente. It's not even peace. Um, and that's what he considered a, a pro, that he had achieved that much before ending his life, which is very sad when you think about it. Mm. Very sad indeed. Um, your father described you as strong-willed and outspoken, and as you've just said, he would have been mortified to know that you've read that you've listened to his diaries but if he was alive today what would he say about the film you've made wow um of course that that that's um a, a hypothetical question and one that i have uh, obviously considered myself a, a number of times um i i quickly add that i think he was right i mean i have to cop to being um willful and, and difficult um, so uh, I think he was accurate in how he described me, but um, I would have to say that, um, uh, you know, in, in that hypothetical world, I think that he would enjoy uh, it, the fact that his story was told, and, um, and I would like to think, and here I am getting emotional with you on the phone right now, but I, I'd like to think that he would be... Um, relieved perhaps that um, I was able to find um, peace with him even though we, we were unable to do so in life. 